Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna talk about firing your coach. And what I mean is not your actual tennis coach or maybe an actual coach that you may use. We're gonna talk about firing your internal mental coach. That voice in your head that reacts to when you make mistakes, to how you talk to yourself in between points. And we're gonna give you guys a plan and a way to fix that and a way that you can actually give yourself a better structure in between each point to help you win more matches. So to start, what I wanna do is just ask you a simple question. If you were paying a coach, let's say $100 an hour, and the only feedback that they gave you after an error was, man, you suck, that was terrible. How bad are you? God, you suck. And then they would curse at you and belittle you and demean you and tell you that you're not good enough or you're playing really, really bad that day. Now think about that. Would you continue to pay that coach money? The answer is no. The logical answer is no. No! So then why would you pay your own inner mental coach that money? Why would you give them the time of day if you can choose, and it is a choice, if you could choose to do something better for yourself, for your mental health, and for your own game? And I see this the most at the junior level, I do see it at the rec level, and I do occasionally see this at even the highest professional level, but it's way, way less. And so the biggest thing is, okay, what are the best players in the world do so well rather than the worst players, right? What are the best players in the world do so well instead of what maybe the average rec player may be doing that isn't allowing them to play to their maximum potential? Let's take a pause there. If you make a mistake, what should be your process after the mistake? Should it be an emotional reaction or should you think about it analytically? So that's what we're gonna start with and we're gonna go from there. So to help you guys with your mental process between points, we're gonna establish a four step process that we're gonna go through every time you complete a point. And this will allow you to have a routine that you can go back to whether you're winning or you're losing points and it'll be consistent and something that you can repeat every single time. And once you do this and you get in the habit of doing it, at first it might take a little bit while longer, but once you get in the habit, you'll be able to cut that downtime to the allotted USDA or ITF rules, which is about 20 seconds in between points. So the four step process boils down to analyze, plan, clear, see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through each one of these steps and how you wanna connect it to physical actions as part of your routine in between each point. So first, win or lose the point, you wanna analyze what happens and why it occurred. So let's say, for example, you're in three quarter court and you miss a forehand in the net short in cross court, all right? You wanna analyze where you are, where your opponent is and what the root cause of that error was. Was it bad targeting? Was it bad decision making? So let's say you're playing cross court from the forehand side on the deuce half and you miss the ball in the net and your opponent's standing on that side. Next time you're in that same situation, you're going to tell yourself, okay, instead of going cross court short, I'm gonna go for the open court that's down the line and that'll be your immediate correction. So you analyze why you lost that point and you correct so that you don't make that same mistake in the future. And so now that was a, a target choice, right? A decision-making issue. Or if you missed your target, let's say you were pulled out wide and you decided to go down the line instead of playing high percentage cross court, next time you would tell yourself, okay, I'm in that same position, I'm gonna go cross court so that you can pick a better target and make better decisions, okay? So the first step is to analyze what happened. So the second step is to plan for the point ahead. And so your plan should be derived from your strategy. Your strategy is your assessment of your strengths and weaknesses versus your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. So going into a match, you should have an idea of what you're going to try to accomplish. And in between each point, you're going to plan for what you're going to do the next point. Let's say, for example, your opponent has a weak backhand and you're serving. You're going to say, all right, I'm gonna to target towards the backhand and then I'm going to pull them to the open court. I might play, if I'm on the ad side, I might go wide to the backhand, make him hit a running forehand so that I can then open up the backhand again. If we do get into a ground stroke rally, I'm going to then target the backhand. You could, within that, decide, okay, I might play high and heavy or I might chip. You know, there's different variations that you start to add in. But at the bare minimum, you have to have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish in the next point. So that's step two is plan. Now, 
Step three is clear your mind. And this is extremely crucial. There's a lot of emotion that comes up when you're playing matches and when you're competing, right? You, uh, you're invested, right? You care about what you're doing. And it's really important that you don't let your emotions cloud your judgment or your ability to make decision making. So the big thing that you wanna do in between each points is clear your mind. And the great way that the pros do it and players of all levels do this is they'll use a towel and they'll walk back to their towel that's at the back end of the court and they will wipe their face. And as they do that, you wanna take a big inhale and a solid exhale so that you can relieve the stress of the previous point or whatever might have happened so that you can reset mentally for the next point. A visual aid that I like to use is referencing the movie Bruce Almighty, uh, Jim Carrey movie, and when he's talking to God. He's in an all white room and the person playing God is all wearing an all white suit and basically this all white room where he walks into uh, has no lines between the ceiling and the, and the wall and the wall and the floor, right? It's a kind of like a bubble room. Um, you kind of do see it at first and then it fades out and it's completely all white. So if you were to take a deep breath and think about that clear white room and then exhale, what will most likely happen is you will relieve the stress that you may have had before, right? You'll notice that there's a little bit of tension release and you'll be able to relax and be kind of primed for the next point. So whatever the place that you go to that allows you to be calmer or a little bit less stressed, that's where you want to go to as you wipe the towel across your face. So that is step three is clear your mind. And then the final step, and this is a step that is often overlooked by players of all levels, is the only important thing that you should be watching on the court is the tennis ball. So when you go to actually start the point and position yourself, whether you are returning or whether you are serving, is focus on that fuzzy yellow ball. See the ball. Right. If you are serving, you're looking at it as you're bouncing before you serve. If you're returning, you're lining up your eyes on the ball in your opponent's hand. And you're really focusing on it and trying to see and track the ball from their hand to their toss, to their contact, to your return. Right. So seeing the ball is an extremely crucial part of this and it'll allow you to focus back in on what you're doing in that moment. So again, four steps are analyze, plan, clear and see. And you wanna go through this structure and through this process every single time in between each point, in between each game, in between each set. And that way you're constantly problem solving without emotion. And this will allow you to make better decisions under pressure situations and allow you to play to your best ability. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the mental process in between each points. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are getting some value out of this. I'm noticing some comments and sharing and all of this stuff. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe to the channel and tune in next week for another great video that we'll have to help you level up your game.